I also have a couple of slides on remote podcasting, which has become quite uh, quite a thing over the last couple of months and years. So I wanted to take a look at that because there have been some recent developments in remote podcasting that I would encourage you to take a look at. So I will just add this to this to this bit and then we'll jump into our first um, short Q&A. Um, so when you take a look at remote podcasting, um, it's basically the same setup as before. Um, so remember, you have two speakers, two mics, um, and they are not in the same room as you would usually be in an interview podcast, but you're connecting, for example, uh, via a video conference tool or an audio link tool, or you call each other on the phone. And the ideal way is to record then is to not depend on internet connectivity, um, at least depending on how stable your internet connection is. And what you then what you do then, and I I, I was I wasn't too sure whether to leave the, the double ender in the, the slide title, but I think this will help you find um, the right or this this will give you the right terms to to put into your search engine if you want to know more about the setup. Basically what you do is you connect over a, a conference tool, audio or video conference and you record on your own end. So you basically have at the end of the recording session, you have two audio files uh, distributed, one with each speaker on their own device. And then the next thing is to merge them. So you want one, one shares their um, audio track with the other, and then you basically um, put them into your digital audio workstation. In this case, um, it's a screenshot, of, a, a screenshot of Ultraschall again, and you can use that then to synchronize those two files um, and and have a podcast that sounds almost as good as if you two had been in the same room, depending on the latency um, of your um, of your connection, um, which you can also edit later on. So this is basically a generally a great tip to get uh, started with remote podcasting because it enables you um, to record on uh, to record in good quality while still um, not relying on internet connectivity. Um, I would also recommend if you have good connectivity and if your interview guest or your podcast partner has good internet connectivity, um, take a longer look at, stu at studio link than you would want to and i would actually i would i can't stress that enough you can use um big blue button zoom i don't know even skype for remote uh, for the remote conversation but usually the latency will be quite high and uh, studio link has actually managed to cut that down while not cutting down on audio quality so studio link is actually both a good tool to enable this scenario that that that's being called double ender here, but it's also a great tool for you to record um, directly your your guest because there have been a couple of developments over the last couple of weeks actually um, that make this even um, more accessible and useful. And this is what I mean. Um, Studio Link is a tool that um, is integrated in Ultraschall and it's basically an open source plugin, a standalone plugin. It used to be a standalone plugin that you could just install on your laptop or your, your computer and then use it to both do streaming and recording. Um, and this is the first time now that this is accessible via browser too. So you don't need to install any kinds of plugins. You don't need to install any kind of app or anything like that. So this is now accessible to, uh, for example, an, a one-time interview guest as well. So you create a link. Um, you give yourself an ID. You um, um, send, send that link to your interview guest, and then you can record in um, amazingly low latency and amazingly high audio quality um, the uh, the and the the whole well it's basically given that it's integrated into ultrashall it makes it makes it makes it quite nice but even if you're not using any tool like that um studio link would be a, a great place to look if you want to do remote podcasting 
Um, disclaimer though, um, the Studio Link Quick Web, which is the browser version, um, will ask you for, I think, a contribution of five euros per month. Um, but it's basically one way to support open source software. So I guess I find that reasonable. There's also a couple of other tools to, to enable cloud recording or um, recording um, uh, remotely. And I would just wanted to drop their names here so that you can check them out on your own. My recommendation for this would be Studio Link, but if you're, if you're not too, too keen to use Studio Link, um, check out Clean Feed, Zencaster, and Anchor FM as well. <laughs> 